When getting started on a digital transformation journey, one of the first steps you need to do is assess where you are today. And where you are today has to include your information technology and your information technology capabilities within the organization. But how exactly do you conduct an IT assessment as part of your digital transformation? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And when we're helping clients define their digital strategies and roadmaps for the future, one of the first things we do is look at where you are today. What do your business processes look like? What does the organization look like? What's the culture? What are your future state strategy goals and objectives? And what is your IT organization look like? What is your IT capability and function look like? So conducting an information technology assessment and understanding of the current landscape, the strengths and weaknesses, will ultimately help you define how to get to that future state that you're trying to get to. So what I want to do today is talk about the steps required to conduct an effective information technology assessment. And if you're looking for additional digital strategies to make your digital transformation more successful, I encourage you to download our digital transformation report. It's an annual report we publish each year that provides a number of industry best practices and lessons learned and tips from other digital transformations we've been involved with. And it also provides a number of independent software reviews and rankings to help you define what your future state digital strategy and roadmap might look like. So I encourage you to check that out with the links in the description field below. Now the first and perhaps most obvious thing that needs to be assessed as part of an information technology assessment is an understanding of the software applications that are currently in use throughout your organization. Oftentimes that comprises of a few core systems that are used by much of the organization, but it also uncovers a number of other systems that are being used, oftentimes without any sort of centralized knowledge that the systems are being used in the first place. Oftentimes we work with clients that might be using several hundred different applications and half of them they weren't even aware were being used by certain pockets of the organization. So getting a complete inventory of the different technologies that are being used, how they're being used, how they're integrated, where the data is stored, how they're not integrated, where the data is corrupt, all those different components of a software landscape is really important to understand so that you're not just going straight to your future state, but instead you're understanding what it is you have to work with today and you can be a little bit more prescriptive and customized in terms of how you define a digital strategy to help you get there. Now, once you've defined the inventory of applications that you have, you also want to assess how well those systems fit or don't fit with what your needs are for the future. And this would include functional fit. How well does application A support its intended purpose for the organization? You also want to understand what kind of support is available for that solution. Is it a current solution that has robust support available to you as an organization? Or is it a solution that's being sunset that soon won't have any support or maybe already doesn't have support? You also want to look at not only third-party support, but internal competencies as well. So in other words, how well do people internally within the organization understand how to use that software? And then finally, you also have to look at the long-term roadmap for that solution. Is it a product that's viable in the long term, or is it one that's on the decline and it's likely to be replaced by some other flagship product provided by that vendor? So you want to understand those different components of the current systems you have in place now so that you get a sort of heat map of that inventory and understanding of how well all the different systems in your application inventory meet those various needs that I talked about here. Next, once we've defined the different applications and we have an inventory, now we look at the architecture and the integration among those different systems. So in other words, we look at how those systems talk to one another, whether or not they even do talk to one another, where the data resides, that sort of thing. So we wanna make sure we understand the enterprise architecture that exists today so that we can see, again, where the strengths are, where the breakdowns are, where the opportunities for improvement are, and we also want to look at not just the architecture and integration, but also understand the different platforms we have. So there might be development platforms that the organization is using to create customized solutions or maybe spot solutions, point solutions, 
to address specific needs that commercial off-the-shelf systems may not be able to. So we want to have a complete understanding of how that software application landscape ties together, how it integrates, what the architecture is, and what the different platforms are that are used within the organization. So that again, we can define a digital strategy and a roadmap and understand where we're starting from and then define how we're gonna get there to that future state. Another important part of an information technology assessment is looking at your data and analytics. And data is increasingly important to organizations. It's becoming an asset that can be extremely valuable once an organization figures out how to use that data and make better use of that data. So really understanding your sources of data, the strengths and weaknesses of the data you have in place now is extremely important. It's also important to understand how data flows throughout different systems. So if you have a siloed or fragmented technology landscape, you wanna know where the data resides today and how it's flowing between systems or if it's flowing between systems. Now, data is an important input into another component of this whole bucket, which is analytics, reporting, business intelligence, basically all the outputs we're getting from the data. So what kind of reports do we use today? What kind of information are we looking for? What are the things that we wish we had that we don't have access to today in terms of data and reports and analytics, business intelligence? So it's an understanding of what we have today, what's working today and where the deficiencies are. And again, this helps us understand where the opportunities for improvement are, as well as help us define that future state of how we might improve and build on the strengths we have today and address those weaknesses within data and analytics. Now, so far I've talked about the more physical components of information technology, the systems, the architecture, the data, the things you can see and touch and feel. But there's another organizational component of IT assessments that needs to happen as well. We need to look at the IT organization as a whole, understand what competencies and skills we have today because it may be that we wanna build on those skills that we have today. We might find that the competencies we have are so deep that it might affect the types of technologies we deploy in the future. In addition, we often find that IT organizations are more focused on support and break fix types of functions. In other words, they're there to make sure that the technology keeps running. When it breaks, they fix it. But a lot of organizations are trying to move to a more strategic role for IT departments. So we've got to understand and measure where those gaps are between where we are today and that support and break fix mentality versus that more proactive strategic skill set that we might be looking for from our IT department in the future. So this is why it's really important to look at the entire organization, the skills we have, how we're organized, the sorts of competencies we have in-house, the sorts of competencies we're leveraging third parties for, and in the future, the sorts of competencies we might want to continue to build either in-house or through third-party outsource providers. And so typically when we go through a digital transformation, there's going to be a material and significant impact to the IT organization. So in order to define what that future state IT organization is going to look like, we need to understand what the current state IT organization looks like, which is why this piece of it is so important to the overall IT assessment. Now, all of these different components of the IT assessment that I've talked about so far really culminate in an assessment of how well our current IT organization and our IT capabilities support or align with our future state strategic vision. In other words, we need to understand where we are today and how that compares to what is needed to support our future state strategy, goals, and objectives. So we need to make sure we've got strategic alignment as an IT organization in terms of that future state. And now that we've assessed our current state, now we do a sort of gap analysis against what we think we're gonna need in the future to support that future state strategy. For example, if you're an organization that has made the deliberate decision to invest heavily in analytics and business intelligence and data, you may find that you don't have the right capabilities to support that now. And so that gives you a thread to work with in your digital strategy which would be to further build those capabilities within the organization so that the IT department can support those data and analytic capabilities that you're looking for in the future. Typically what comes out of the strategic alignment assessment piece of 
the overall IT assessment, is a series of activities that are required to start to migrate the IT organization from where it is today to where it needs to be in the future. So through this gap analysis, we understand what it is that we need to change. We understand how big the changes are gonna be. And we can start to put a plan in place to start executing on that, to start to move the needle and move the IT organization where it needs to be to support our future state goals and objectives. So all of these things I've talked about here today are an important input and foundational aspect of defining a future state digital strategy. You wanna make sure you have a clear IT assessment and a good understanding of your current state so that you have a good understanding of where it is you're going and how hard it's gonna to be to get there, how long it's gonna take, how much it's going to cost, et cetera. So I hope this has provided you some guidance and understanding of how an IT assessment might fit into your overall digital strategy. For more tips and best practices for your digital transformation, I've included a number of resources in the links below, so be sure to check that out. Most notably is our digital transformation report, which is an annual report we publish each year that highlights some of the best practices, tips, and lessons learned from digital transformations with our clients that we've helped them with, as well as independent software reviews and rankings as well. In addition to that report, there's a whole host of other white papers and videos and resources that I hope will help you through your digital transformation journey. So I encourage you to download those and check out the links in the description below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. Part of your information technology assessment is the, is the, or are the, a heat map of how well those systems fit our future state needs. Now we look at the, uh, we're second grade English when you need it. Um, <laughs>